You're listening to Workforce Innovation News, powered by Elwia 23. Get ready to hear about all things workforce development and workforce innovation. And now, on to the episode. Hello, and welcome to WIN, Workforce Innovation News, where we talk about all things workforce innovation and workforce development. I am Jamie Korda Hajawi, the director of Elwia 23. And today is a special episode in celebration of September being Workforce Development Month. That's kind of our month, right? So I wanted to celebrate and recognize the month with true tradition of the Workforce Development Month mini series. So this episode is one installment of the three mini episodes in the three mini series, something like that. Um, uh, so this month you get three episodes for the price of one, and that is quite a deal. Um, and I really wanted to take the time to showcase our biggest pillars of support in workforce development, our business and industry leaders, right? Because without business and employers, there's no workforce. We can't develop if there's nothing to develop. And as we put people into these jobs with the employers, we need to train them and make sure they have education and skills they need. So our education providers. So I invited the wonderful Robert Woolham from North American Lighting to join us today to talk a little bit about how his company or the company he works at and what he does there, how they partner with workforce um, career and technical education programs at education institutions. So thank you so much, Robert. You are a wealth of experience in registered apprenticeships and partnerships in general. So I really appreciate you being here. Um, to just kick things off, go ahead and introduce yourself, give a little bit of background on what you do at North American Lighting, um, anything that you want to share with us. All right, thank you, Jamie. First off, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm very, very happy to support. Um, my name is Robert Wollum, and I work with North American Lighting I'm out of Paris, Illinois. I'm at our corporate headquarters building. Uh, we are the largest automotive lighting manufacturer in North America and are very involved with our educational partners in both apprenticeships and tech ed programs um, to further uh, the careers of uh, both incumbent workers as well as new hires coming in. Um, so huge supporter of that. I've been with the company for about 10 years. Uh, we go 10 year anniversary is gonna be in December. And the majority of my time has been as the apprenticeship program supervisor um, with the company. Um, prior to, I've got 20 plus years in manufacturing. I started off in aerospace and then transitioned to automotive. I'm also a veteran of the United States Army, um, training in several capacities in, in the military as well. So I appreciate being here. Thank you. Thank you for your service and thank you for all that you've done. And I love your background and how many different things you've done and how you have gone from uh, vehicles to the stars to vehicles on the ground. That That is quite the leap there. Uh, but we're so lucky to have you and grateful that you're joining us today. So I said career and technical education, and I kind of hesitated when I said it because it is academic jargon. And then you referred to tech ed. So for our listeners who might not be very involved in the realm of education or academia, can you give me your definition or how you see career and technical education from your perspective in industry? Uh, tech ed with industry, um, there's just so many different pathways if we want to talk about technical education. Um, with What we mostly use it for is our technician apprentices. So the technicians that are on the floor, on the shop floor, working on, on machines, keeping things running, keeping things going smooth, right? And uh, we've also branched out in recent years to PLC programming. Again, another piece of tech ed that's a hard skill set to come by. Um, electronics. Um, tool and die, machinists. So we have uh, our newest is equipment design. So we have several different pathways and it all goes back to tech ed. That's just my small piece with automotive with North American lighting. You talk to different industries and they're going to have different pieces, but it all still falls under that technical education aspect. Awesome. Yeah. So it is the the hands-on experiences that learning and education programs that are really geared towards um, making sure that an individual is ready for the workforce quickly Absolutely. and for today's workforce, not the workforce of 20 years ago or in theory what it will be in 20 years, but ready and rearing to go right now. So that's pretty awesome. Um, 
you talk about you being the apprenticeship um, supervisor there, and this isn't necessarily a episode focused on apprenticeship, but I would be remiss to not at least try to find out a little bit about it and promote some apprenticeships. So um, I know to make apprenticeships happen, you do have to partner closely with those education um, yes. providers. So do you want to talk about how what your role is in the apprenticeships there at NAL and how that influences your partnerships with any of the education providers, be it high school, um, post-secondary, community college, or otherwise? Yeah, absolutely. Um, our, our apprenticeship programs are true to the nature of an apprenticeship where there's a, a highly structured on-the-job training piece of it. Um, however, we also have a classroom portion as well that we rely on our educational partners to be able to kind of fill that gap. So it's really a combination of both. We call it a hybrid program. Um, they're in the school a couple days a week. They're working a couple days a week, OJT. Um, and they're working towards those degree credentials or certificates from the education standpoint to further advance their career at North American Lighting. And we work with all the local area colleges, uh, Lakeland College, OCC, Only Central with IECC, um, Kaskaskia, Ren Lake. Um, I don't think I'm missing anybody for uh, LWEA 23. I think we come yeah. all there. Um, but we work with all of them very, very closely. Um, they've been amazing to work with. Even if there's a program out there that doesn't necessarily currently exist, um, they've always gone, gone above and beyond to answer that call. Um, if, if we've got, hey, we've got this skill set that we really need to address, what do you have that will help us with this? Or what can we work together to build um, that can kind of close that gap? That right there, that is like the hot button. Okay, so you have in industry right now, your current workforce, you identify something that's not quite up to par. There's a gap there, there's deficiency you can't wait for the next 12 years for some curriculum to be developed. You you do need to be able to move at the speed of business and education does not always move at the speed of business. Um, so can you go a little bit more into what it looks like when you bring a gap, a deficiency, an opportunity to these um, your partners at the colleges and how quickly they're able to respond or if they're doing anything to try to make processes that could get drawn out a little bit more reflective of your time needs. They have definitely sped up over the years. I think they've realized that they don't travel at the speed of business, but they are doing their best to catch up to us. <laughs> um, and they're doing very, very well at it. They're doing, they're doing great at it. And whether you've got a skills gap due to um, a population decline or whether it's due to a, a grow, uh, an aging workforce, in which we're dealing with both sides of it. Uh, the skills gap is there, and if we don't figure out a way to close that quickly, uh, we we can't we can't wait for it to happen. We have to be prepared to fill it as as it does happen. And the colleges have been amazing to be able to to help, and they they work together too. I mean, you would think that they they're kind of competing for students, but with the realm of community colleges, we have borders to deal with, and there's all kinds of, of red tape that comes along with that, but they, they do work very, very well together. For example, um, we wanted to kick off uh, equipment design uh, with, uh, I'm sorry, electrical with OCC, and they thought they had a program that, that was going to fit the bill, but just to double check, we already had that program with Kaskaskia. And I actually reached out to Kaskaski and said, hey, do you guys mind sharing this with OCC just to compare it, just to see where we're at? And they, they're always amazing and working together to make sure that, uh, I mean, we, we've got a workforce across uh, OEA 23, and, and they all work together to help make sure we're all on the same page. That is really good to hear. I see partnerships amongst the community colleges often, but I do sit in a unique position, so I don't always know that that's um, the perspective that other people get too. So knowing that you in industry are seeing it firsthand. Um, yeah, when you think about different colleges and their their districts, you think, ah, I bet they're not going to want to offer the same thing because then they're going to be competing. But I, my experience has been that community college leaders are so dedicated to providing the most um, robust and relevant um, services and education to students and also being responsive to workforce needs because they're a customer too, in a sense, um, 
but they'll do whatever it takes. There's some, yeah, red tape and bureaucracy involved with a lot of things, but they do try to work together and make things go as quick as possible. So as we talk about these community colleges and having, you know, you're creating essentially your own pipeline of talent. Mm -hmm. Have you worked with, or are you considering working with the local high schools and maybe the technical education um, teachers, instructors, or programs with local high schools to kind of extend that talent pipeline a little bit further back and create a little more interest even earlier in a student's um, education journey? Absolutely. Um, I've been working with local high schools, I'd say probably from the onset of our apprenticeship programs, knowing that that's where that talent was going to come from. Um, obviously, we, 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 we find it other places as well, but multiple pathways is the way to go, right? You want to have many different entry directions um, incoming. But the local high schools have been a great source. Um, I go out and talk to our local high schools every year. Uh, we have, I go out and we, we actually go out and speak to the high schools. Um, I go out and, and offer like uh, our, our problem solving training. We'll go out and, and deliver it to the seniors in high school just to get them thinking. All right. And they see NAL. I mean, if you were to drive by NAL and you don't live in Paris, you wouldn't even, you wouldn't know what they make. North American lighting. All right. So you're thinking fluorescent lighting in your office. You're not thinking automotive lighting. All right. So you don't even know it's there. So it's important to make sure the community knows what you're doing. And, and so we do talk to the high schools a lot. I mean, we've even gone back further than that. And we've begun talking to junior high uh, because really when you're talking, and I keep going back to apprentices, but when you're talking apprenticeship pathways, uh, the earlier you can catch them and get them on that trajectory in high school, there's so many pathways when they hit high school that if they wait too late to kind of figure out, if, especially if they want to go into an apprenticeship program or a co-op program, um, they have to make sure those high school credentials are being met for graduation, right? You don't want to be, okay, I, I want to take this, this co-op class and work for North American Lighting my senior year and go into their apprenticeship program after the fact, but I have four other classes that are keeping me from doing that because I want to graduate. Um, so it's important to get them early on. Um, and, and we work with the teachers. They, we bring in, we actually bring them in to tour in AL. They get to come in and see the facility and see what we do. And pre-COVID, we're not back to this yet, but pre-COVID, um, the 2019 in the fall, before everything hit, we actually brought through every single sixth grader and above in Edgar County. Um, not only Edgar, but Clark County and for, for here in Paris. So we had students in the building every single Thursday morning for the whole whole year. <laughs> they, they knew every Thursday morning they were going to have people walking through. So people kind of set their clocks by it. They knew it was happening. But it's just amazing to see their eyes open and you can see like the, the interest they have. And we've been doing it long enough now where you get students that came to us in seventh and eighth grade for a tour. And now they're touring us in their junior year and it's kind of that refresher like wait a minute uh, I've seen this place before this place is cool and this is what I want to do I need to clip part of this episode because you've just explained everything so well and you are now going to be my champion for all industry leaders that they all need to listen to you and do what you are doing because that's that's right on the dot that is what we should all be working towards is there's a lot of really great opportunities here in the area and to to keep our future workforce here and interested and aware of the opportunities here, we have to show them. And the sooner we can show them, the better, um, help them plan out. And they, you know, getting them into the facility in sixth grade is really cool because they're just like, oh, wow, this isn't what I imagined. And I didn't know there was all this stuff here. And that looks neat. That's fascinating. Like, I want to mess with it. I want to touch it. I want to move those knobs. Like, they're interested at a different level. And then when you bring them back, I'm really betting that at that junior senior level, then it's like there's more context, it's clicking. And when you point out, and this is where our IT department is, and they're like, yeah. oh, yeah, it's not just working this line on the floor or putting things in these packages on, on that line. There's IT, there's HR, there's accounting, there's sales, there's all these other opportunities in this manufacturing business, but it's, there's more than just manufacturing going on there too. So Absolutely. I think that's a great approach. I love it. That is a best practice for sure. So I know that businesses, especially small to medium-sized businesses, their managers, their owners, executives, they're, they're kind of just trying to survive sometimes, and they don't necessarily have time 
to go establish relationships, especially if they're not seeing the value in establishing relationships with um, education and career and technical ed partners. So what can you shed some light on what the values are that you're seeing immediately and long-term over the last few years? Um, what do you think businesses should know to help encourage them to reach out to career, career and education partners? First off, you have to understand early on that it's not uh, it's not going to answer your your need for right now. Okay, that's important to remember. Uh, we started our apprenticeship programs way back when apprenticeships weren't that big in Illinois. This was 2016, and it was just starting. People were just starting to talk about it, and we kicked off a small group of apprentices and even took a year off after that. Like we're still kind of dipping our toes in the water. But then we realized with, within the next, the few following year, how important this program was gonna be to help NAL continue to grow and continue to flourish. And we exploded from there. We started with four students in 2016. And to date, I've got roughly 60 students that have gone through the program, either currently in it or have already graduated. Um, and it's just been amazing. Um, the ROI, it, it is a little bit more long-term. However, once they get there, um, I can tell you from experience, managers that I work with um, out on the floor, they'll, they'll tell me that the ones that have come through the apprenticeship program are running circles around the workforce that came in other ways. Um, so the, the tech ed piece of it's huge. It's a, it's, a, it's a big, big benefit. And the colleges are so very willing to help. Um, they all have uh, coordinators now that you can reach out to that will absolutely help you. I mean, you just got to tell them you need it, that you want it. And there's not much more work for you after that. <laughs> They're going to take care of it for you. Um, it, it, they'll just, just work together and you'll, you'll get the program that you need. And I, you may not see the benefit today, but I can promise you you're going to see it later on. That's wonderful. Yeah, because it is kind of hard sometimes when you don't see that immediate payoff you think, okay, well, I'll do it later. And it's just easy to push to the back burner again and again and again until, hey, look, these people, these competitors, these business partners around me are having a lot of success and I haven't even jumped on that bandwagon yet. And I've had the opportunity. So all of, all of our business leaders who are listening, if you've had the opportunity and you've kind of put it to the bottom of your to-do list, Robert is telling you it is easy. So Clarify how easy. When you have something that you want to talk to an education partner, what do you do? Do you pick up the phone? Do you send smoke signals? Is there a bat signal light that you flash? How does this work? <laughs> I think everybody's a phone call away. Everybody's an email away. Um, very, very quick response. Um, I, I, I'll call out Joy Fitz, for example. I worked with her when she was in Lake, and then I, we, we continue to work with her at Kaskaskia, and it's just amazing to work with. Uh, it, Nate Carlson's been great on the Lakeland side and with the LWEA 23, and they're there for you. They, they understand the ins and outs. They take care of the registration with the Department of Labor, um, and, and that's another piece of the puzzle when it comes to the apprentice programs is there's another credential that goes along with it for your team member or right, for, the, for the student. Um, it's not only a degree program, it's a Department of Labor certificate program, and it just it all comes together to, to just put you further in a career for advancement later on in the future. Um, but very, very uh, receptive to, to your needs. They, they've been great to work with. That is so awesome. You talk, you mention names, do a little name dropping, and those are all partners that I work with. And well, Nate has left LWEA 23 just as of a couple of weeks ago, but um, it is a really great team. I see so many people who are truly invested in improving quality of life for individuals and for communities at large. So um, I think that all of the career and technical education partners, as fancy as that sounds, they are individuals just like business leaders with the, the mindset to really make a difference and to support in any way possible in this collaborative spirit too. So it is always worth connecting. And for our business leaders who don't know Joy Fitz or don't reside in the Kaskaskia region and you don't know where to start, LWEA 23 staff is a great starting point. You can reach out to me anytime and I'll be able to put you in contact with who would best be able to help you out. Or if you know Robert, just go to him and he'll point you in the right direction too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as we kind of start to wrap up this topic a little bit, what 
what key points do you think are important for business leaders to know that we haven't brought up yet or something you wish you knew when you first started that would have made things so much easier when implementing either apprenticeships or partnerships in general? Um, I would say, and we, again, we were early in the, in the state as far as apprenticeship programs in 2016, but since then there has been so much growth um, in that realm and there's been so much incentive and help to go along with it. Um, for example, the apprenticeship tax credit. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that, there's a lot of kickbacks from the state and from the federal government that will help offset some of the costs of these programs for the company. Um, and, and I wish I'd have known more about those earlier on, uh, just because it does help. It's not, it's not always, easy. I mean, budgets are tight uh, right now, right? That's just kind of how the way the economy is. And, and every, every little bit helps. And so don't let that be a setback for you. Um, there are programs out there, there are grants out there, there's incentives out there to help offset that cost um, and, and make it doable for whether you're a small company, a medium company, large company like NAL. It's, it's, it's very, very doable, very achievable. And I promise you, you'll see the benefit. And, and we, I know we talked a lot about apprenticeships uh, and that's a big piece of what I do. But we also have other tech ed programs that we take advantage of. Uh, one of the most recent ones with Lakeland College is our Fast Track to Tech program, kind of a boot camp style program where they go through their manufacturing skills certificate rather quickly. I mean, they can wrap it up in about eight weeks. I um, mean, it's kind of a crash course. We utilize it for incumbent workers, um, team members that currently work for us that, that want to move into a, a technical type field. And we couple that with OJT on the floor and, and we're looking at a, a four to six month turnaround to have a, a trained employee in those, in those positions. So there are, are, there's so many different programs out there to be able to take advantage of. Um, some, some with a little bit quicker return on investment, some a little bit longer, um, but they're, they're all, and, and we use them all because again, I said earlier, multiple pathways um, to be able to get there. You, you don't want to tap into you don't, all your eggs in one basket type deal, right? All right. Well, one other thing I thought about while we were talking, um, each career and technical education program at the um, community college level, for sure, and I think even for the high school level, they do, by law, have to have an advisory committee or an advisory council made up of employers. So do you or anyone else from NAL sit on any of those advisory committees be it um, college partners or um, high school partners to ensure that the new curriculum as it's being developed um, and even current curriculum as it's being reviewed is still accurate, relevant, and useful for the jobs that you're hiring for now. Yeah, we are very involved with those advisory groups. Um, I know I personally uh, work with Lakeland very closely. I'm also on with Kaskaski and Rin Lake College. Um, so we are very involved. And, and, it, and it's because of it really is a team, a team deal. Like education needs to know what business needs and education or business needs to know what education needs. It kind of goes both, both directions. Um, so we really need to work together to make sure that we're putting out the best possible programs that we, could, we can put out because that's going to give us the biggest kind of benefit when it's all said and done. Uh, we just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page, but yeah, those advisory committees are extremely important for that. So if we do have a small gap, um, we're able to to work through that and discuss how we're going to close that. That is awesome. That's wonderful. So right there, we've talked about at least two strategies, just one-on-one -on -one outreach to whatever um, community education partner or career and technical education partner is in your area. Um, get involved in advisory committees with either high school, community college, or both. Um, and then registered apprenticeships in itself would employ at least one of those, but that is another partnership where you're working very closely one-on-one -on -one to, to develop that, that program and then to keep that pipeline full. So those are really awesome strategies. You guys are doing wonderful things at NAL. I'm so glad that you get it. You see the value of having that partnership and that you are promoting that value as well. You're not gatekeeping. You're not like no one else can be partners with Lakeland because we got it. You are truly committed and I love it. It is wonderful. So before we wrap up, we have one more tradition for Workforce Development Month for the mini series. And this, you're not prepared for. We do um, some 
rapid fire questions with our guests just to know a little bit more about you and make it a little bit fun. So if you are ready, I'm going to ask you a series of questions and you just answer real quick without a whole lot of thought. And it's a, just a fun way to end the show. So what do you say? Are you ready? Let's do it. All right. So what's your favorite flower? Uh, Lily. Um, sunrise or sunset? Sunset. What's your hobby? Oh, I don't, we, we love the outdoors, hiking, um, fishing, kayaking. We get the family out as much as we possibly can. Um, my other hobby is apprenticeships. That's also what I do as a job. So it makes it, it makes it fun. I love it. That is awesome. Um, what's the best compliment you've ever received? I don't think I have an answer for that one. Um, <laughs> I, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. You're gonna have, and you told me I can't think about it. So you can't think too much. No. Um. Let's see. Um. I would say my wife said I do. How about that? That's a good one. <laughs> All right, we'll take it. Um. Well, there's so many good ones, but I don't want to re-ask ones I've already asked either. Cats or dogs? Dogs. All right. And if you could live anywhere in the world, where would that be? I would say the hills of Kentucky. All right. You're not too far away. You're almost there. Nope, not too far away. All right. And who is your inspiration and why? My inspiration, I would have to say, is probably my father. Um, I know that's probably a traditional answer, um, but I grew up in the military. Um, so when I graduated high school, I went military route myself. And so that's kind of what got me to where I'm at today. Uh, I got out, went into manufacturing and just continued on through. So yeah, dad. You know what? That is traditional, but that speaks volumes. Dads are pretty awesome. So I think that is a wonderful answer. Thank you so much for being a good sport with the rapid fire questions. And just thank you, Robert, for sharing all of your experiences, your insights, um, what has worked well for you and your enthusiasm for partnerships. Um, I think there's so much that we can do throughout so many different industries to develop talent pipelines. And what you guys do are doing at NAL is is wonderful and ahead of the game. So I'm looking forward to seeing that replicated throughout the rest of the region. So thank you again so much. Um, and to our listeners tuning in for this episode, I just want to remind you that a strong talent pipeline is essential for the success of any business. And by partnering with career and technical education programs, you can ensure a skilled and motivated workforce for years to come. So with that, thank you all. Bye, guys. You've been listening to Workforce Innovation News powered by Elwia 23. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. To learn more about Elwia 23, visit lwa23.net.